Hello, I'm Dr. Alexandre Amato, a vascular surgeon at the Amato Institute. And today I'm going to talk about the articles published here in Brazil on lipedema. Some people who follow the channel know that I'm a vascular surgeon, but I'm also a researcher on the topic of lipedema. It's a subject that I love. Here I have five scientific articles that I published on lipedema. There's more fresh out of the oven. I'll put a link below for anyone who wants to see what I have to show. But I wanted to comment on the evolution because there's a rationale behind all of this. The evolution of why this sequence of articles and what I foresee in the future. First of all, we published some identification and I symptomatic evaluation questionnaires for uh, lipedema. Why did I publish the article on symptomatic evaluation of lipedema? It includes a questionnaire that we use to assess how much the disease is bothering the patient. This is very important to assess the inflammatory phase, whether it is worsening, improving, if the patient has a response to the treatment or not. So what we measure, we can improve. So that's why I considered this one of the main ones and I had to start with this questionnaire. So we made this screening and identification questionnaire here. If it's such a prevalent disease, why do we need a tool like this? It's prevalent and people aren't making the diagnosis. So I need something that gives an alert that says, look, be aware that you might have lipedema. A screening questionnaire, it, it won't give the diagnosis, say, you have lipedema or no, you don't. But it can say, look, be aware that you have a high risk of having lipedema. It's good to seek specialized help. This is a great questionnaire because it can be applied online. I'll put a link below if you have any questions. Want to know your probability of having lipedema, it won't be able to say yes or no, but it will be able to tell your probability. Just answer this questionnaire. So there's all the scientific part of it for those who like, you can read, but there's the practical part that can be used. I came across a very big problem. Lipedema, the, the diagnosis is clinical through conversation with the patient and the physical exam. And I realized we needed something more objective to show the diagnosis of lipedema. Although in the past there were some studies showing the diagnosis with DEXA, with CT scans and with MRI, um, a device that is widely available is uh, extremely easy to find, is the ultrasound. Uh, and I wondered why doesn't anyone use ultrasound uh, to diagnose lipedema? So we conducted this research here, ultrasound criteria for lipedema diagnosis. This is my pride because it was published in a journal of very high international impact. So the whole world can now use the criteria we created for diagnosing lipedema through ultrasound. So I will also put the link below for those interested in reading about it. In this article, there are the area where lipedema can affect women. There are photos too of the disease. Many times people ask for photos of lipedema. There are things I can and cannot show on social media, but here in the scientific article, we can show a lot. Here it is, a leg with lipedema and the areas of fat deposition affected by the disease. So this is an article that I am very proud to have developed along with several colleagues here as well, alone. No one does alone a scientific work that must be very clear. This here, um, it was also a case report on an advanced stage lipedema. 
and it shows um, how much the disease impacts uh, a, a woman's life, especially in the more uh, advanced stages. This is very important uh, for us to be aware of because um, in these more advanced stages there will be an association of various comorbidities and sometimes we are treating one thing and not looking at another. And if we treat everything, the impact would be much better. Now I'm making this video to show this latest article that also came out in a high impact international journal, which shows the conservative clinical treatment and the positive impact on in women's lives compared to surgery. It's not that I'm against surgery, but I see surgery for lipedema as a tool in the treatment because it won't bring a cure. It's quite interesting. This week I had a patient who had already undergone five liposuctions on her leg and was still seeking a treatment. In other words, liposuction didn't treat the lipedema and since she didn't undergo conservative treatment, because she didn't have that knowledge, she kept seeking another lipo, another lipo, another lipo, and she'll enter this cycle if she doesn't do the conservative treatment. Fortunately, I showed her that there is this option and it's here. I found this publication showing various different aspects of lipedema that can significantly improve quality of life. The interesting thing about this article is that anyone who wants to see photos of lipedema can find the classification of lipedema in photos. All the cases here were, well, documented, both from an aesthetic point of view, with the improvement of cellulite in this case, as well as the improvement of fat nodules in conservative treatment the reduction in leg volume also in conservative treatment. This is another case where there was improvement not only in symptoms but also a decrease in volume up to this point here without surgery. And here the treatment of comorbidities associated with lipedema. So why am I showing all this? Because the goal in treating lipedema is not just one. Each woman will have a different goal. First, we need to prioritize mobility as the most important. Second, improving symptoms, the inflammatory symptoms like pain, sensitivity to touch, swelling and bruising. All of these reduce quality of life and need to be improved. And the aesthetic part also needs to be improved, but it won't be the top priority. So we need to list all of this rationally, because often trying to address everything at once is not productive, you won't get the best result in anything. And here I have a sixth study, this one talking. This one discusses whether lipedema is a unique entity, if it is a unique disease. This one is quite theoretical, but the idea see, was to create this chart that shows the disease progression that shows the inflammatory cycles of worsening and improvement of the disease and the fat deposition. And this separates the treatment into three phases. The first phase is for inflammatory improvement. The second phase is for self-awareness and avoiding inflammatory triggers. And the third phase, yes, is for or volume reduction. This article is, is so interesting in that I was invited to present it at the American Congress on lipedema and it really changes the treatment paradigm because the literature places surgery as the main tool. But actually, surgery is just something that has to be used or rather can be used at a certain point in the treatment. Why? Because if you perform surgical treatment, reducing the fatty tissue, you're not influencing this inflammatory cycle the inflammatory trigger can still be there and then you'll maintain this low-grade chronic inflammation which will present symptoms in another organ. It may no longer present there in lipedema because the fat is gone, 
There are several previous studies that showed that this fat, femoral, this fat in the lower limbs, it is protective against certain diseases that are triggered by inflammation. So just by removing the fat, you are not treating the disease. You may reduce the symptoms because of this, but that inflammatory cycle will continue. Happening. All these scientific works here that I created, took part in and got published internationally, develop a rationale for the disease, but it didn't stop here. We have a lot still being developed. So I invite you to participate in scientific research. I'll put a link below in the description, which is a registration for people who are interested in participating in some type of research. There is the Brazilian Lipedema Association, where we try to seek, gather resources for research development on the subject Brazilian research, but we need people willing to participate in this. It can be anything from a simple questionnaire or even some treatment. So this sequence is also important because so far I have researched the diagnosis, how to measure the disease. Obviously, the next step will be the treatment. This is already underway and I intend to show you good results soon. Did you like our video? Subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends, share the registration link for scientific research and see you next time.